I started by disconnecting all the wiring connections, the fuel lines and vacuum lines, as well as a few things from the top of the engine that would give me enough room to slide it out from under the car. One big bulky item to get out of the way is the airflow meter that connects to the throttle body. And of course I have the vacuum as I go, lots of cobwebs and evidence of rats or mice. Since I hadn't yet attempted to turn the engine over, I thought I'd remove the spark plugs first and inspect them. I didn't want to try to fire the engine up, I just wanted to see if the ignition, the starter, and the fuel pump were working. Look at that. In its current state, I thought it was a little pointless to try to get it running for a few reasons. One being that I found a few wires and hoses disconnected and I wasn't sure what all went where since I'm not very familiar with fuel injection. The second reason being that there are signs it hasn't been maintained very well, and I potentially spend a lot of time trying to get a bunch of things sorted just to run right anyway. And lastly, at just over 100,000 miles, it's due for a rebuild regardless, so I'd just be wasting time and potentially doing more damage really. As you can see, each spark plug was pretty difficult to remove, and I had to use a breaker bar with the socket on three of them. Number two and number four are so deep down in the engine tin, once you unscrew the plug, you lose it inside the tin. So I needed to use long needle nose pliers to pull them out. After removing them all, I turned the engine over with a screwdriver through the inspection hole before trying the key. I felt like it moved fine, so I figured it was okay to hook the battery up and try it. I'll take that as a good sign. The ignition, the starter, they seem to be working. Now I can start taking everything apart. Opposite the airflow meter, I started removing the ECU, but the bolt was rusted so badly it was rounded off, so I decided to unplug it, and it will stay in the engine bay when I drop the engine. Nearby, I detached the wire that I think runs to the starter solenoid from the positive battery cable. On the other side again, I removed the cover for the relay board to disconnect the ignition harness, the fuel injection harness, and the alternator. It's wet. As I continued, I found that fuel was leaking from the small rubber elbows of the fuel injection lines. So you can see it squeezing out. I think leftover fuel from the tank or in the lines themselves was probably pumped through when I turned the engine over with the key, but I'm guessing this means that the fuel pump works. Since I was messing around with leaking fuel lines, I decided that was the next thing I needed to work on removing. I followed the fuel line to the fuel pressure regulator to disconnect that. Then I removed to the air intake hose that connects to the throttle body. On the other side of the engine where the fuel lines come into the engine bay from the firewall, 
I disconnected them where they join with the rubber hoses. They were very brittle and actually snapped one while I was trying to push it back down through the right engine shelf tin. Since the D-cell valve is actually mounted to the body in the engine bay, I just detached the large vacuum hose. Also, I doubt these relays were originally zip-tied like this. Then I loosened the set screw to disconnect the throttle cable and this spring that is hooked to the rear engine tin. On top of the plenum, I then unbolted the throttle cable housing and pulled that aside. Under the car now, I pulled on the throttle cable through the engine tin. Before I could do that, however, I had to remove the set screw again in order to slip this rubber grommet off. And that's everything from the top of the engine. Now all that's left are a few things on the underside of the engine and I'll be ready to drop it and pull it out.